Chilton inside of the Taylor Chilton Hour. Thank you so much for watching. You're watching The Blend, and this is where legends live. And on today's show, I do still have, I keep telling you that I have tickets to give away to the River City Jazz and Music Festival. You should know by now that it's taking place Saturday, April 2nd at the Cannon Center, and that I do have tickets for you to win. But you must register on my website at www.tinatilton.com. This jazz and music festival features Eric Benet, uh, After Seven, Kenny Lattimore, of whom I had the opportunity to interview earlier and speak with, Julian Vaughn, Joe Johnson, and my special guest right about now is the man that my mom loves musically, <laughs> and also my brother-in-law respects in the jazz arena. He's none other than Grammy-nominated saxophonist and bassist, Gerald Albright. Welcome to the blend, Mr. Albright. Thank you, Tina. How you doing? I am great. I'm great. So great. No, no, hold on. Let me let me rephrase that. What's up, my friend, brother? <laughs> oh, ah! Oh six. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, an 08 right here. At All the right. Top. I got my, I got hey, my, hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I got, I got my yellow on to represent. So <laughs> I was like, oh, Gerald is an alpha. Okay, oh, yeah. we're doing it. We are Absolutely. doing it. This is great. This is great. Well, okay. Well, let's let's talk about you being born and raised in L.A. L.A. Are, are we talking uh, uh, Compton or what? What part of L.A. are we? Well, close to Compton. I was born and raised in South Central L.A. South and Central. Uh, uh, most people know it as Watts, California. Uh -huh. And, um, uh, you know, with a beautiful close knit family, uh, the Albright family, it was the four of us, you know, mom, dad and my older brother, Bill and myself. And uh, so that's where I come from. Those are my roots. Yeah. Yeah. Well, OK, so you are a saxophonist. You, you play bass, guitar as well. Yes. But you started out in piano and you, you had a piano teacher, but you did not like piano. <laughs> Am I correct? Well, I love piano now because I, oh. I write songs based on chords and, and using the piano uh -huh. space. But starting out as an eight-year-old, I absolutely hated, I detested piano. We had an old upright piano in our den at home and, you know, parents customarily want their kids to at least take piano lessons for a while. So the, the choir director at our church uh, moonlighted as a music teacher during the week. Ah. And he had several students that he taught, and I was one of those students. And uh, he initially taught me piano, and I didn't like it. I never was prepared for my my lesson this week. <laughs> and uh, so after about three or four weeks of not being prepared, he talked to my parents and said, "Hey, we need to take him off your money. <laughs> yeah, we need to take him off that piano and put him on something that hopefully he'll be more inter interested in. He happened to have an old saxophone in his garage that he mm -hmm. used to play years prior. Okay. And um, so he brought that unannounced to the next lesson. And he said, Gerald, we're gonna do something different today. And all of a sudden he opens his case and there's a silver King Alto. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is different. Wow. And he put it together and he gave me a fresh read. He said, lick this read, make it uh -huh. nice and moist. Uh -huh. And so I did, and then we put everything together and it, he showed me how to make my first squeak and I've been squeaking ever since. And, th <laughs> and, and this was eight years old? Well, it was about nine at that point. You were nine. Yeah, yeah. I was about nine years old. Yeah. Isn't that something? Well, of course we know you as an accomplished saxophonist, yes. but you switched to bass after you saw Louis Johnson in concert. Yes, uh, during my college years, uh, there was a real famous festival called the Orange Show, which was in San Bernardino, California. Uh, and that was right down the street from where I went to school at the University of Redlands. And I happened to go uh, to the festival on the night that the Brothers Johnsons were, they were headlining the show. And Lewis Johnson stepped out and played this bass solo that made my mouth drop. And I said, I want to do that. Yeah. And so the next day I called my friend, John Jorgensen. I asked him if he had a spare bass guitar that I could just use to kind of play with. And he gave me a, an old Hoffner bass, a hollow body bass uh, that uh, um, the Beatles used back in the day. It was a real really? historical bass. And I sat in my dorm room and kind of taught myself how to at least get the fundamentals down. And then as time progressed, I started playing in little bands to get extra money for food and to buy books at school and the whole thing. Yeah. And, and then after that, it became an integral part of, of uh, my portfolio. So 
uh, I love the bass. I, I still record uh, all of my records on bass, and uh, and I also play bass for other people too, both in the studio and live settings. Let me make sure I'm clear. Then you're basically saying that you're self-taught. You, you you taught yourself the bass. I taught myself the bass initially, and then along the way, I I, I really kind of studied or just had informal kind of like shared lessons with uh, dear friends of mine like Nathan East, Freddie Washington, Marcus Miller. Stanley Clark, all these guys had tips for me along the way uh, to make my bass playing uh, more fluent and easier. And when you have those kind of teachers, you can't go wrong, you know, so. I bet, I yeah. bet. Well, you had some amazing tour teachers, I guess that's what I'm gonna call them, because you went on tour with Patrice, Patrice Russian. Right. Uh, shortly after then, you, you, from what I understand, you became the man there afterwards because you started to tour with Anita Baker, Ray Parker Jr., Atlantic Star, Maurice White, Tina Marie, The Winers, Whitney Houston. I'm like, did you ever sleep? That's the, that's my question <laughs> regarding that. Did you ever sleep? <laughs> well, you know, when you're on the road for weeks and months at a time, sleep is kind of like the thing that you wish for most. But uh, <laughs> but you know, the passion gets you through that. You know, I I was fulfilling my dream musically and. Once you're doing something that you really love to do, it's really not worth. So if you lose sleep over it, it's like, okay, I'll catch up later, you know? But I, I just love what I do, even to this day. Do you oftentimes recall that experience of being just out with all of those legends? That's what I can call them. Yeah, like, you know, it's interesting. They're legends and we're, we are all in awe of them, but they're just regular guys regular guys and friends just, of yours now i just call it my extended musical family and when you <laughs> hang out with them you know stanley stanley clark is just stanley freddie washington is is freddie marcus miller is, is marcus you know yeah and yeah. we're all hanging together and we just shoot the breeze we may talk about music or we may just be in a joking mood oh now Gerald, you ain't hang. gonna get me to say uh, you, you may talk about music you ain't gonna get me to say that you <laughs> all don't talk about music. It, 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 it's in there. I have a musician husband, and music is in there everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but well, you're absolutely right about that. It works its way into the conversation somehow. <laughs> yes, it sure. does. Well, can you go into detail for me of what life has been like since you began your solo career with with smooth jazz kind of taking off? Like, like what has life been like for you since then? Life has been great. I mean, anything that you strive for on a huge level, you got to work hard, you pay dues. And uh, there were some peaks and valleys in my career. Uh, thankfully, more peaks than valleys. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I was fortunate enough. I think the secret to success is relationships, you know, really being around people who uh, you feel good about, kindred spirits, you know, people that you can trust, people that uh, you admire that lift your game up personally. And I, I think that's really the secret because it makes you work harder to be a better person, better musician or whatever you decide to do in life. And um, I, I was very, very blessed to start my musical career as a recording artist in 1987. And now we have 22 projects officially that we have out there on the globe. So we're very proud of that. Yeah, I, I can tell. I, I'm looking at your big smile on your face, and you should be. <laughs> I was like, seriously, you should be proud of that. That's that's that. And, and people, surely by now, they realize that what you all do is really hard work. Because again, yeah. you've been to it. You've been out there where where most people would, you know, take a regular nine to five. They're home. Hi, honey. Kiss the wife. Kiss the kids. Uh, but but you are, you know, you you've dedicated your life to entertaining and bring a joy to others. Uh, it's been my honor to do so. Uh, I think that was my destiny early on. Uh, it's the one vocation that I felt totally comfortable doing and pursuing. And I just got more and more excited as I went through my 20s, my 30s, my 40s. And we won't go for the other math, you know, but <laughs> it's still, still common. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm still excited about it. And I always tell uh, you know, people that I speak to uh, candidly and musical students that uh, even though I'm a professional musician, I'm always a student. I'm always learning. I, I never profess to be all knowing, omniscient. You know, I, I'm always looking for that next level of production and songwriting and playing my horn and expanding to, to other horns. I just bought, late last year, I bought a bass clarinet. 
And I've always I've always wanted a bass clarinet because I love the sound of it. So now I'm going to incorporate that sound within my arsenal, and uh, you'll probably be hearing that on subsequent projects. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Well, you played for the president of the United States of America. Yes. And this was not Barack either. Wasn't it? Mm -mm. I wish it was Barack. <laughs> it was not Barack. <laughs> However, it was Bill Clinton. Yes. How did you land that gig? Well, uh, it was a phone call from Quincy Jones and Tom Scott. Um, they put together an all-star uh, saxophone section that played in front of the Lincoln Center during uh, the first inauguration celebration. And if I can list some of those names, it was uh, Kirk Whalum, it was mm. Kenny G, it was mm. Jerry Mulligan, it was... Um, some greats. Who else? Uh, Grover Washington Jr. was on that. Oh, wow. Um, uh, you know, there was like, I can't remember them all, but there was at least 10 saxophone players lined up side by side in like 35 degree weather uh, trying to play a saxophone. And uh, But it was an honor. And, you know, just to see the, the president and the first lady, you know, wow. like literally 20, 30 feet from us really appreciating what we were doing, it was an honor to do. Is, is, is that challenging to play in 30 degree weather? Oh, there. absolutely. I mean, it is. Because yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, the horn even feels different. I mean, your, your, mm. your fingers get stiff because of the, the cold weather, but cold weather. even the horn feels, I mean, it's for one thing, you you can easily play out of tune when the weather's that, that cold. So you have to be cognizant of, okay, I got to make sure that I'm in tune with the other guys who I'm playing with. Mm -hmm. So there's more, if I can say, maintenance when it, when it comes to cold weather or extremely hot weather. Uh, it definitely affects the body and it also affects the musical instrument. Well, it was a whole lot of you guys, so all you had to do was blame it on the next person. Ah, he did it. Yeah, it was just like, it was gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know what? You also have a, a couple of acting gigs under your belt as well. You, you, you acted in uh, A Different World. Yes. You were in Melrose Place. Yes. And I'm just like, well, did, did you play the saxophone with your alpha shirt on? Like, how did that? <laughs> Tell, tell me about that too. Well, I, I did play my saxophone, but I didn't have the alpha shirt on. Oh, I, I kind of went, with, kinda oh. went with the, the wardrobe that the, that the director wanted me to, to wear. But uh, oh. it, it, it was great. Him. Yeah, it was it was a great experience to, to be in TV. That's a whole nother world. TV is just like a 180 from what I normally do. You know, the whole live spontaneous thing. TV is like, okay. We're gonna do this scene 20 times over. So you may play the same oh. song 15, 20 times and that whole thing. So, but, so you uh, found that experience challenging? It is it is challenging because it's a test of patience. You know, we as jazz musicians, we like to thrive off of, of like full throttle. Whatever we're playing, we just like to get that that soulfulness out spontaneously with, with whoever we're playing with. You know, TV is like, okay, you're gonna play 90 seconds of this tune and then we're gonna go. To commercial or whatever and yeah. you just can't fulfill getting your rocks off if i can say that yeah. uh in tv uh but that being said the element of of uh, being very visual on on you know those shows that you mentioned uh yeah. can do nothing but help your career and 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 bring positive things to you so yeah. you're absolutely right about that playstation you have a song. You have a song on the PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't own one. I think my husband got something around here somewhere, knowing him. <laughs> but <laughs> what what game or, or what, what what is that on? Oh my goodness! You know, you're taking me back to the '90s. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. I'm trying to remember the name of that game, but um. Okay, I'll remind um, you. It's Castlevania. Castlevania, exactly. Yeah, Symphony of the Night. Yes, and you know, that was a very popular game and, and a lot of people over the years have approached me about the game. Huh. Um, again, you just, with music, you never know what you're gonna wind up doing. Uh, it's not all about just live gigs or doing a recording session. You may be in commercials, okay. you may be, I did a Wendy's commercial. I mean, you know, oh. uh, with some of their, their the breakfast products uh, back in the day. So you just, you live by the telephone and whatever, whoever's on the other side of the phone, 
you know, that, that may very well be a work call for you. That could be With some money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got some money? Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> got to pay rent. Let's do this. Yeah, got to pay rent. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. Okay, well, I got a quote. I saw this and I found this to be very intriguing. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, you, the viewers that are watching, if you have any questions or comments for Gerald Albright, please uh, hit us up in, in the uh, comment section and we'll be more than happy to show that uh, for Mr. Albright. But uh, a quote from your bio, and this is your quote. It says, top to bottom, Albright says, whether in concert, listening to my music over the radio or CD player, I always want my listeners to be taken on a musical journey with different textures, rhythms, chords, progress, no, I'm sorry, chord progressions and moves. I want people to know where I've been and where I'm going and to let them hear that I'm in a really good place in my life. Yes. That was just phenomenal to me. And Thank I said, you. music music can do that, can it? I, I like, you painted a whole picture of what music can do. Well, thank you for saying that. I mean, that that was very honest from me, and uh, it's not only good for the listener; it, it's good for me. It's therapy for me to be able to uh, write songs, uh, produce songs, perform songs. And, you know, it makes me feel better uh, as a musician. It's just something about a oneness between you and your instrument that uh, really elevates your soul and your spirit. And it's the equivalent of somebody getting happy in church and running down the church aisle. They just get the spirit and they just got to release it. Well, that's what it is for us musically on stage or in the studio or whatever we're doing. Yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah, just, I bet so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We've got to come in here. And now, I must say, I'm going to tell you right now, top. this is my mom. This hey, is my mom. mom. She says, good evening, Mr. Albright. Enjoying the interview with none other than Ms. Tina Filton. Love hearing your music. Keep up the good work. Oh, I told sweet. you. I knew she was coming. I knew she was coming. I was like, our yeah. mom is a fan. So. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, mom, mom, I am enjoying the interview very much. And you have quite a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I think she knows. <laughs> I, I think she knows that. I think yeah, she knows. yeah, 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 yeah. But so, so my other question to, to you then, because like you said in, in the quote, you know, we, we like to hear or we hear that you're in a really good place. But what happens when you're in a dark place? How does that affect your music? Well, I try to stay away from dark places, actually. Uh, I try to keep music on the positive because I know that it makes me feel better when I write positive music. It makes my, my fans feel better uh, when I unleash positive music to them. So I try to finesse my way out of dark places. I mean, I know we all have them. Happens, yeah. I just I just process it better. And, and I just say to myself, you know, this dark place is less important than the next chapter. And I just try to get to the next chapter to feel better mm -hmm. and hopefully um, enhance the people around me to feel better as well. Yeah, you guys are some preaching men. I tell you, I, I can't wait to see this show. It's, uh, it's almost <laughs> like, do I, do I need to bring my um uh, my, my church fan? And, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> bring, bring it on. Bring it and everything. Bring, bring the whole thing. <laughs> I think y'all will have that comfort. <laughs> like, like, seriously, almost everyone on the ticket that I have interviewed have had some sort of inspirational, uh, uh, even at some points, biblical uh, sayings uh, to the viewers. And, and it just makes me think, like, this is going to be an amazing concert uh, I can't wait to see it so. Well, I can't wait to be a part of it and and uh, share the stage with those that you mentioned earlier in the interview. Yeah. You know, Eric yeah. Benet and all those guys. It's just, I love those guys. Again, extended musical family, and mm -hmm. you know, because we're always going in different directions during our own respective careers, uh, we rarely get a chance to see one another. So when we can get on one stage, maybe at the same time, maybe not. But if we can get backstage and just kind of catch up for a minute. Yeah, it's good idea. Hey, what's up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, bumping elbows. Exactly. What is new for Gerald Albright? What's new for Gerald Albright? What's new for you? Well, I have a, a new project coming out called G Stream 2, Turn It Up. And it's the sequel to the original G Stream. Uh, EP that came out two years ago, uh, which I'm proud to say all three songs on that EP went number one on Billboard. And so we're very proud about that. And uh, I just found out today um, that upon just today uh, being the release of my new single, G Wiggle, 
Uh, it's number two most added in the country right now, coast to coast. Congratulations. For all the radio stations. So it's off to a good start, and we hope that uh, we have a nice ride with this project. I'm very excited about it. And now, please please help me understand what's a G-Wiggle? Wiggle. Well, the, the term G-Wiggle is directly inspired from my grandson. I have a two-year-old grandson oh. who's up. Whose birthday is literally on the 23rd of this month, a couple of days from now. And um, he visited me last April during uh, COVID. Uh, my daughter, Selena, who a lot of people may know my daughter, Selena Albright, who is a wonderful vocalist and uh, has her own independent record company and she has her own recording career. Uh, she's doing very, very well. She just released a new single called uh, Dishonest Smile. But uh, she and her husband, drove from Texas where they used to live to Colorado uh, with our grandson so we could spend time because we hadn't seen our grandson all COVID. And uh, because I'm an early riser, I usually would, would be the one to feed him breakfast in the morning. And so he would have his cereal and his blueberries. He, there's something about blueberries he just loves. Mm. <laughs> and I would feed him. Every time I would feed him, he would do this gee with oh. you know, and his name is Gavin. <laughs> So I said, well, you know what? I got to write a song about about Gavin. So we're going to call it the G-Wiggle. He just G-Wiggle. <laughs> so that's where that title came from. You know? That is so funny. Gosh, you, you guys get inspired off of any little thing. Absolutely. And, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Very creative. Okay. So this is the part of the, 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 the interview where I typically ask an uncommon question. It's not taken from your bio. However, it's not a crazy question. It's not a and indecent, if you will, question either. So my uncommon question for you would be, you have worked with so many well-respected artists and, 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 and uh, if you had to choose one to be your sibling, since you mentioned that you all were family, who would that one sibling be and why? Quincy Jones. Quincy would be your brother. <laughs> Big brother or little brother? Uh, well, He's a little older than me, so I'm going to say big brother. <laughs> big brother, okay. Uh, Quincy, if, if he was my older brother, I mean, what better mentor to have? You wake up and you have Quincy Jones in your household and with all this musical knowledge. I don't, I don't think there's too many people that can beat that. Uh, Quincy has performed, arranged, uh, produced, written songs for just about anybody that you can think of. And to be a fly on the wall and hear his stories and just capture and embrace his spirit on a daily basis as a big brother, that's a win-win for me. Man, wow, check that out, <laughs> okay. Well, hey, Mr. Albright, I totally thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being on The Blend with me today. I know it's like our time, it's gone by so fast. We're 23 minutes into the interview and we wanna play something at the end of the broadcast. Uh, that has you on it and, you know, doing your thing. I'm, I'm so not musically inclined, so just like... <laughs> that was pretty good form, though. Okay. It was? Okay, okay. That cool. was good. I learned was a little good. something from watching you guys. <laughs> but but I do want to thank you, and I want to remind you, the viewers, to uh, make sure that you go to my website, tinatilton.com, to register to win free tickets. I do have those. In the meantime, make plans to attend the River City Jazz and Music Festival Saturday, April 2nd at the Cannon Center featuring Eric Benet, After Seven, Kenny Lattimore, Julian Vaughn, Joe Johnson, and thank you, Gerald Albright, my very special guest today. $49 is all you need to get your face in the place. So go to uh, Cannon Center's box office or you can go to Ticketmaster to purchase your tickets today, right now. Gerald Albright, thank you for being a guest on The Blend and I hope to see you very soon, sir. Thank you so much for the invite, Tina. I had a blast and I hope to see you as well. Very, hey, very soon. You, you gonna sign something for my mama? You think I won't? I'm, oh. I'm obligated to sign something for your mama. <laughs> there, there you go, mama. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Albright. Thank my you so pleasure. much for watching. <laughs>